So this past week I was working on my camo game and I do camo with one layer of stencils with three colors. So this gun that you're seeing is only three colors and only one layer of stencils. So it's really easy to make a nice, cool, faded camo. I don't know about you, but personally, I prefer blends in my colors because if it's not blended, it kind of defeats the purpose of a camouflage, doesn't it? I'm going to take you step by step on how I did this gun. And the very first step, as with any Cerakote project, is to prep. And then I always blow off any excess air before I put paint to any parts. So I keep a, an air nozzle over by my paint booth, and I always hit it with an air nozzle first. Once everything's looking good, it's the base coat goes down. And I apply it to Cerakote standards, which is going to be eight passes twice. Starting at the top down, bottom up, top down, bottom up, until I do eight, and then reverse it, bottom up, top down, bottom up, top down, until I do eight on each part for the base. Now, one of the things about the way I do camo is I use a wet on wet application. Now, if you've watched my Cryptek video, then you'll know that wet on wet allows you to do some pretty cool fades and that's exactly what we see here with this camouflage. The good thing about it is again one layer of stencils so we're not having to go crazy with stencil coat stencil coat stencil coat to get all those little pieces. It's able to do it with just one one layer of stencils. So getting the inside of handguards can be a little tricky, so I always have a clean glove and I'll actually take the handguard off of the rack, adjust my spray gun down, and just kind of feather uh, the inside of the handguard. That allows us to get some coating on the inside and in the areas that maybe it won't spray through, and then it also allows it to get the inside of all of those notches on the handguard. So it's nothing crazy, just real easy, just Lower that paint gun down and just kind of feather it out both directions. And then on the thicker part, just get a little bit on that inside so everything's got a nice solid coating. So once everything has a nice base coat, you still have to let it ambient flash. So I let those parts sit for 10 to 15 minutes just with the black base coat. After that, before they go in the oven for the first time, I bring them back to my paint booth. And then I'm hitting them with my other colors. And the first color I hit this with is going to be green. And I'm very particular in where I hit because I want there to be continuity from my upper to my lower. So I just kind of pick a few different spots on the lower receiver and I hang the upper next to it so I can lay it, see them next to each other on how they are. And once I get that color on the lower, I move the lower over and then put the upper up on the rack. And again, I orient those items so that I can make sure there's color continuity from upper to lower. And I know with these colors all being darker colors, it's hard to see. I tried a different camera angle and, and I kind of failed on that because you get the back of my head. So, but again, it's just wet on wet and trying to line up roughly where the colors are relative to the other parts that are being done. That way there's, there's that continuity from upper to lower to hand guard. And I just work through the upper, the lower, the handguard with the green. And then I come back through and do the same thing with the gray. And again, it is a process and it's all just kind of winging it. Um, it's what you think might look good. Honestly, every single camo I've ever done, I feel like it's going to look like crap. And then when I take the stencils off, it's like, oh, hey, all right, cool. Looks great. Um, it's really hard to visualize when you're doing the wet on wet, but you really get those solid blends. And you can kind of see here um, on these items as they're hanging uh, what they look like with that wet on wet on them. Now once the wet on wet has its ambient flash, then it goes in the oven for your first cure. And I do 15 to 20 minutes on the first cure. I'm only doing two coats. so. 
Um, I'm not too worried about over flashing it because I'd have to do 30 minutes or more to really do that. But I want to make sure it's safe to handle because I will be handling and stenciling the entire project. Okay, now to the stenciling. Stenciling is a bit time consuming. Uh, one thing I always do is put the parts together so that I have cohesiveness in my stencils as well. And once I have everything matched up and lined up, then it's just a matter of going to town with stencils. You want to put a whole bunch of stencils on there because that's what really makes the patterns pop. So you do too few and it just doesn't look right. And this is going to look like a ton of stencils uh, by the time this gets put back in the paint booth. But you saw the finished product, so trust me, more is better. Most stuff less is better. In this case, more is better when it comes to stencils. Um, I do use those uh, clay rubber tipped tools for putting the stencils on so that I don't scratch that Cerakote because it's not fully cured yet. So it's not durable. It's just kind of safe to handle where it's not going to leave fingerprints. So just stencil that sucker up and just go, 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 go. I'm going to speed through the rest of the stenciling at about five times pace so you can see where I have those stencils on there. And then we'll talk about what happens when it gets into the paint booth. So enjoy this sped up stenciling bit and I'll be right back with y'all.
Okay, once we get back to our booth and have those stencils on there, now the artistic part really happens. So around the yellow stencil, you're going to be able to see the colors that are underneath that stencil. And they're going to be different from one half of the stencil to the other because of how we did our wet on wet application. Now you tone down your spray gun and then you want to make sure you put a different color over top. So if you've got your yellow stencil and you can see black, you want to put either gray or green. If you can see green, you want to put either gray or black. And if you can see gray, you want to put either green or black. And you just work your way across the entire project until you have lightly covered the edges of all of those stencils with a different color than what you could see originally and you just go, go, go. And it is time consuming to do it right, especially if the colors are close, like on this project. But again, you saw the finished product. So, uh, you know, you just gotta be patient. And you can see here on this upper and lower combination, you're not going thick. You're still gonna be able to see some of that yellow stencil underneath that color. But that's what you gotta do in order to get that nice blended camouflage look um, on this gun. Once the upper and lower is done uh, with one color, I move on to the handguard. And really, you just kind of bounce back and forth until you're satisfied. And trust me, if you're anything like me, you're never going to be satisfied until you get it completely done and put it together. Because it's so hard to visualize what that's going to look like with those stencils off and assembled into a gun. But work the process and trust it. And like I said, practice on something, maybe a ceramic tile. Um, and just you can do that with any color combination and you'll get the gist of it. So when I was first doing it and wanted to do different patterns, when I had two or three solid projects in the shop, I'd have a tile or two prepped. And I would do those with the leftover colors from the single things. Because, you know, you always mix too much paint. So you always have that little bit extra. Um, so, yeah, uh, just this is the process. So I'm going to speed through the rest of the painting of the handguard and the upper and the lower with that second coat and then that stuff goes in the oven um, once it goes in the oven you cure it out uh, you can go either way you can leave the stencils on at full cure temp um, i cure everything at 250 depending on the substrate or i cure all metals at 250. depending on the substrate uh, you can go up to 300 or you can go keep it at 180 for polymers with ARs, I just do it at 250 because not every color is 300 friendly. And I just like to be consistent and not have to think about other factors. So um, you can leave the stencils on or you can put it in for 20 or 30 minutes at 180 and then take the stencils off and then full cure. Uh, people do it both ways. The stencil material I use is supposed to be safe up to 180 degrees, but I've never had any bad effects if I forget or leave it on when it goes in at 250. So you have to learn that just with what you're using and what your project is. So once this is done, um, you're, that's it. You know, we assembled the rifle and took nice pretty pictures. So it's really a simple camouflage. And thank you all for watching. If you like the content and want me to be able to keep putting out videos, please share the video like the video, and subscribe to the channel. As of right now, I'm doing all of these videos and um, I'm not in this to make money, but YouTube does not monetize you unless you have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And I'd like to be able to continue to do more projects and do stuff uh, and do giveaways, you know, but until I have some way to afford that, um, I can't just give stuff away without something coming in. So please like, subscribe, and, and help me grow this channel if you like the content. Uh, if you don't like the content, sorry. Um, hopefully you find something you do like.